Compose multi-platform 1.6.0 came out recently and bought some new interesting stuff. In this video I will quickly go through those new features. So the most interesting one for me personally is the new common resource API that allows us to share different kind of resources between various targets in a Kotlin multi-platform project. All resources that you wish to share with the different platforms should be placed within the Compose resource directory. Inside that resource directory you can create additional folders like a drawable, font, values, files. The first one is meant for different graphic resources like images and vectors, the second one for the fonts, the third one can contain for example strings XML where we can manage all the string values for all targeted platforms and finally the files directory in which we can place uh, other different files. Those directories uh, also support uh, qualifiers for a uh, density, theme and language. If you want to use this uh, new resources API, just be sure to include the Compose Components uh, resources dependency in the common main source set. You can access uh, all those uh, resources in your project by using a res object. Drawable resources, when linked through this uh, object, will have a type of a drawable resource and not an integer value like we have used with Android. We can also pass uh, drawable assets by using a painter resource uh, composable function. And if you have a strings XML for example, then you can reference them in the code by using a string resource composable or if you need to access that uh, outside of the composable scope, then you can use a getString function instead. The next improvement in Compose 1.6.0 is a preview composable annotation in Fleet. Now you are able to preview composables inside the Fleet as well. Fleet currently supports a preview annotation for composable functions without parameters. The next improvement uh, is uh, associated with uh, dialogues uh, and uh, pop-ups in iOS. So before, if you use those composables on iOS, they couldn't expand uh, outside of the bounds of the initial composable size. However, now they can take a full screen. And you can of course disable this behavior if you want by passing a platform layers equal to false to the UI view controller. Next we have the experimental API for a UI testing with a Compose multi-platform which was already available for a desktop and Android but now supports uh, all platforms. So now you can write the common tests that uh, validate the behavior of your application UI across uh, different platforms supported by this framework. The API uses the same finders, assertions, actions and matchers as JP Compose. One of the new features is the accessibility. So Compose multi-platform accessibility supports allows people with disabilities to interact with the Compose multi-platform UI as comfortably as with the native Android or iOS UI. So now screen readers and the voice over can access the content of the Compose multi-platform UI and the Compose multi-platform UI now supports the same gestures as the native iOS UI for navigation and interaction. There are also other different uh, minor improvements, but I think that those were the biggest one in this release. I'm sure we'll see some new improvements in the upcoming releases as well. Uh, moreover, their roadmap is ambitious and I can't wait for uh, more compatibility APIs for Android and iOS. Have you started using Compose multi-platform framework yet? Comment down below and let me know your thoughts. And that's all for this video. Thank you for watching.